Okay, right now we're going to talk about DNA polymerase and we're going to really just talk about DNA replication. And the reason that we're doing that is because it is very important to be able to replicate a specific part of DNA if you want to generate more of it and then use it in some kind of biochemical experiment. So if you want to do that, um, you need a tool and that tool is called DNA polymerase. And DNA you've seen, we described it before. Uh, but polymerase might be a new word, but it's pretty simple. It's polymer, this is polymer, the polymer being the DNA, which is made up of individual units, and the ace meaning the uh, an enzyme. So DNA polymerase, uh, it builds the polymer DNA. And what we really want to think about here is we really want to think about uh, a strand of DNA like this, that we want to we want to we want to make a copy of, and the cell needs to do this every time it divides, of course, because every time it divides, it needs to make another copy of its chromosomes so that the genetic information stored in them can go downstream to the next uh, cell, so that both cells have the same amount of genetic information. You don't want it to get broken up and lost along the way. So let's just say that we have. A bit of double-stranded DNA, and I'm going to draw double-stranded bits of DNA as though they weren't in a helix. I'm just going to draw them like these straight lines. And it's important to remember, and this is going to be kind of a pain in the butt, but we're going to have to sort of be diligent in marking one side as 5 prime. Remember I described that DNA has a directionality before based on which carbon is bonded to the phosphate. And that directionality goes like this. So this end is 5 prime, and this end is 3 prime. of this top strand, and this end is 5 prime, and this end is 3 prime of the bottom strand. Okay? So the first step in polymerization is to separate these two strands. We have to get them apart from each other. This already forms a sort of complete double helix. It doesn't really need to be changed. It's very stable. So we need to get it in a form in which we can copy it. So the first thing to do is to melt these strands apart. And the way you usually do that in a chemical reaction, if you're doing it, is to raise the temperature. But the other way you can do it is to add an enzyme, uh, if you're the cell, this is what you do, that sort of creates a little bubble and opens up the two strands from each other. And uh, then can kind of go along it and open it up as uh, as something goes moves along the strands, and these are these are called helicases. So you have helicase, and a number of other different enzymes, and these are what actually operate in the cell. But the way we're going to think about doing it for doing it in a controlled lab setting is to just raise the temperature. And when I say raise the temperature, I mean to like 98 degrees centigrade, right? So we're going to almost boil it, and we're going to separate these two strands from each other. Now, once we've done that. We're just going to think about the bottom strand, and the same is going to be true for the top strand, just kind of flipped around 180 degrees. So we're just going to, for purposes of simplicity, just talk about the bottom strand. Now if you want to replicate this bottom strand, the very first thing that you need is something called a primer. Now the primer is um, a bit of magic, but let's just say that we have ways of generating tiny little single-stranded sequences of DNA just from ordering it from a company, right? Just by stringing together individual nucleotides that we want to form this primer. And so what that means is that at one end of the strand of DNA, you have a little bit of complementary DNA that we're going to anneal to it. And we're going to do that by lowering the temperature. So we're going to drop the temperature a bit, not all the way, but a bit, and we're going to allow this little single-stranded bit to anneal, and it anneals because it's complementary to this strand, right? And when I say complementary, it's important to understand what I mean. So let's say this sequence is G, T, A, C, A. Then this strand up here has to necessarily be C, A, T, G, T. Okay? And I know this is a little bit uh, pedantic, but um, 
it's important to realize that this is complementary. It's also important to realize that this strand goes in the opposite direction. So this is the five prime end of this strand, and this is the three prime end of this strand. And now you need a special tool to fill in the remaining blanks, right? So you want to copy all of this. And let's say this is, you know, 1,000 nucleotides long. Well, this little thing here, this primer, it only needs to be 20 nucleotides long. And it turns out it's very expensive and very difficult to make a primer that's 1,000 nucleotides long. So we can't just make the DNA, you know, in a factory and just have it to go. We need to copy this strand to get all the 1,000 nucleotides. And maybe also there's a little segment in here that we actually don't know what it is already, but we know what this segment is. Uh, then we, you can see that we wouldn't be able to just synthesize the strand of DNA. We have to copy it. So if we're going to do that, we need to add uh, the polymerase, right? This is our magical enzyme tool. It's a little factory for making copies of DNA. So we add the polymerase. And we bring the temp to 70-ish degrees, which happens to be the temperature that our particular polymerase that we like, and this polymerase is called TAC, which stands for Thermus aquaticus, which is a little guy, a little bug that lives in, uh, I believe, um, what are they called? Hot springs or something like that, right? So they have, live in very, very hot water and they're used to operating at 70 degrees. So they're super happy at 70 degrees. And so we add in this little polymerase, and I'm gonna draw this just as kind of a blob, but just remember this is a protein that has a special, special shape that allows it to do the job that it's about to do. Anyway, so we have our primer here, and then our blob goes, our polymerase goes, and it sits down at the end of this primer template. This is called the template. Probably should have said that earlier sits down at the end of our primer template pair, and it goes one by one, each nucleotide one at a time, down the string, and it adds to the end of this primer, right? It, it adds it along, and it just adds one nucleotide at a time, and it adds specifically the nucleotide that complements the opposite side, right? So if this is a T-A-C-C, -C, it's gonna add an A, then a T, then a G, and then a G. And it's going to do that all the way down the molecule until it runs off the end. And it's going to copy the whole thing. And when we're done with that, we're going to have two strands of DNA, two strands of DNA that match each other, that are complementary. And remember that this is going on simultaneously to the other strand which we boiled off. And so at the end, what was one copy is going to be two copies. Now there's a little wrinkle that I'm going to have to tell you about in a minute, um, but just remember that this primer here has to sit at the absolute end of the molecule here. If there was some hanging off here, right, that didn't match the primer, since the polymerase only goes one direction, it doesn't actually work on the five prime end. It, 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 it dies. It stops. It doesn't work. Uh, it has to go this way, we wouldn't, our copy would be missing this little tail here. And this actually ends up being, you'd think it would be bad, but it ends up being a very useful feature of polymerase, that it doesn't copy in both directions, because we can remove little bits of DNA that we don't care about, right? So if our primer was here, and we actually had more of our template going off in this direction, then our result would involve a little tail like this. And as we talk about PCR, which is the method that we're going through uh, bit by bit here, uh, we'll see how using different primers that are specific for very different regions of the DNA can allow you to actually restrict your copying to a small section of the DNA that you happen to be interested in. And you don't have to waste uh, a lot of effort copying the entire chromosome over and over again. Okay, so I, I hope that made sense, and if it didn't, let me know. Uh, but uh, what I'll try to do then is go on and talk about PCR and how we put polymerase to work for us in, uh, in the lab. Okay.